Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. This project is an illustration of Murphy's Law, which starts with anything that can go wrong will go wrong, and that started with the microphone. I'm sure whatever I was saying to the camera was interesting, but I can't remember any of it now. This chandelier hung over the customer's dining room for about five years, and then one day it tripped a circuit breaker. It was bought at an estate sale in New Orleans and had never given any trouble up to this time. This is unusual. Most of the time if a light works the first time, it will probably work for decades. Problems like tripping circuit breakers show up after a chandelier is taken down, mishandled and manhandled while in storage, and then reinstalled. Brittle wires break and insulation cracks, especially in lights made before the use of nylon and vinyl insulation. The basic fifth grade science class on electricity is that uh, electrical current goes in one wire. It goes through all the wires until it comes down to the light socket where electricity goes in through here, goes up through the filament, a very little small bulb inside there, which gets very hot, glows uh, white, creates the light, and then goes back down the other side where it goes back through the other wire and out back into the house. Since we have alternated current, that means that 60 times a second, the current reverses what direction it's going in. But that really doesn't matter much for our issues right now. Our problem is, is that the electricity, before it gets to the light bulb, these two wires are touching. This little light bulb is what sort of controls how much actual current can flow through this circuit. If we don't have this light bulb in here and these two wires are touching, there's no practical limit. And that is a short circuit. In the uh, wall in the house somewhere, they have a series of what they call circuit breakers, which sit there and watch the wires. And if the uh, current gets to be too strong, too much, which means that these wires will get very hot and can possibly set the house on fire, a switch pops, cuts it off. And uh, that is why we call it a circuit breaker. This little uh, box here is my digital volt ohmmeter, rather expensive little piece of gear that uh, in this case I'm going to use it to measure exactly how much resistance there is in these wires or actually whether or not I've got a complete circuit. The terminal ends here being not connected to anything is reading OL which means out of limit. So there's just basically no possible way any electricity could flow through these uh, wires because they're not connected. If I touch them together, it reads 0.28 ohms, which uh, is a fairly small amount of ohms, ohms being a scientific uh, unit of how much resistance to electricity there is in the wires. Again, stuff we really don't need to worry about right here. But the thing is, the closer this is to zero, and right now it's about a quarter from zero, the easier it is for electricity to flow through. And since there's no light bulbs in this uh, chandelier right now, there really should be no continuity, no connection. And, well, there we are. We basically have got the same amount as if these, these two connectors were touching each other. So somewhere in this chandelier, there is a dead short. And uh, our job is to find it and fix it. There is a metal tag stamped, Made in Italy. We don't often get that much information. It's steel construction with very nice ceramic bowls. Dating a fixture like this is difficult, but this style was popular in the 1960s, and a lot of them were imported to the U.S. When I pull the candle covers off, I notice a lot of corrosion on the sockets. This isn't uncommon. 
New Orleans is a humid place, and rust will appear on all unpainted steel parts. I'm beginning to suspect more than hot, humid summers. A chandelier this old could have come from a house where everybody smoked. This leaves a film of cigarettes soot on everything in the house, especially ceiling fixtures, which seldom get cleaned. The arms and ceramic pieces would have had a very nice ivory or light bronze color. I've known dealers to take a chandelier to the car wash, clean it with the pressure spray, and hang it in their booth the next day. There was a time when all of these pieces, the nuts, the little pieces of pipe, the arms and all, would have been made of brass or bronze. And we wouldn't be seeing this kind of corrosion, even if it had been in a, a damp place. And I have seen a lot of chandeliers and light fixtures that came from houses that flooded. And by flooded, I mean the water got deep enough to get the uh, light fixtures wet. Now I know the house that this came out of never flooded, but here in uh, the southern United States, it's fairly humid. It's possible all of this could have been just simply due to the humidity, but uh, it is why you should have a chandelier inspected, especially, you know, obviously a used one or antique or vintage chandelier. And uh, something I suspected was going to happen these steel pipes, when they rust on the inside, they get very scaly. Now, normally, I could just pull this wire right out. It would slip from one end to the other, and I wouldn't have any trouble at all. And uh, it's stuck. That one's a little loose. This one's loose. This one's stuck. This one's stuck. And this one is stuck. Which coincidentally lines up with the worst corrosion. I'm thinking this chandelier was probably stored in some place where it was very damp. Um, maybe even the storeroom got flooded. Who knows? But, uh, I'm going to have to let these pipes soak in a little bit of uh, rust penetrant. Maybe we can loosen it up and then worry about getting the wires out after it's sat overnight. These pieces are steel, steel tubing, and ordinarily they would be very smooth on the inside and the wires would just simply slip right out. Unfortunately, as you can see from these rust stains, this chandelier got wet and uh, never dried out properly. As a result, there was water standing in the bottom of, I think, four of these pipes. The rust has flaked up, and now the wires are jammed tight. There's a couple of ways to deal with this. One of them, which I've had success of varying degrees, is to use your favorite uh, rust remover. This is a vapor rust. It's a uh, water-based, so it's safe to use around pets and children. And just simply fill the pipe up, let it sit for a couple hours, maybe overnight, and then uh, see what you can do to get it loose. Otherwise, it's uh, what my father used to call brute force and awkwardness. Now the trick here is to pull this wire straight up. If you pull to the side, it puts a lot of stress right here where it's trying to go across that corner, and that's where it's likely to break. Now, and pulling straight up like this, pretty awkward. So I have made a special tool, which is just this large wooden dowel, a slot cut in the end of it, and a bolt to clamp that slot closed 
and wire goes in here, clamp it down as tight as I can, and I got this brass washer right here to give me a little more footing for my tool, and it's pulling perfectly straight up, and it looks like Oh, there we go. One wire pulled out and uh, five more to go. Under ordinary circumstances, I would be attaching the new wire to the end of the old one and pulling it through while I was pulling this out. But in this case, I've got to run some kind of brush, maybe the world's smallest button. Uh, bottle brush possibly I'll find a gun cleaning brush or something and run it down through this pipe and uh, clean out that rust scale and get the inside of the pipe nice and smooth again as usually happens with these things the last wire is stuck tight and broke off with only an inch sticking out in a case like this, surgery is the only option. The general plan is to drill a hole in the pipe and pull the wire loose from the rust. It's not easy to drill a hole in a small pipe. It starts with a punch mark, then a small bit, and then a larger bit, until enough wire is exposed to pull it out. Repeat the process as necessary. Now that was ugly. In a normal world, this kind of chandelier is actually one of the easiest to uh, rewire because the insides of these pipes are smooth, or they're supposed to be. When you've got a cast brass or cast bronze uh, chandelier arm, the inside is always very rough, may have actually sharp edges, little choke points and stuff like that and you end up drilling holes in the uh, brass arm just to get an American sized wire through it. The only time these are a real problem is when, like with this one, the arm's gotten wet and wherever the water stood the rust scales up and it basically just sticks the wire to it and when you go to try and pull it out you got to break the adhesion over that entire wire before it starts to move and sometimes you just don't have enough strength in the wire to hold that. Drilling these holes at one point after another until I finally came up with a section where I could put enough pressure on the wire that it would break loose without breaking the wire and uh, it just means that when I'm finished with all of it I've got a patch these holes in some way that's cosmetically pleasing. Ordinarily, the easiest way to rewire one like this is to simply take the new wire, twist it together with the old wire, use the old wire to fish the new one in. We can't really do that in this case because of the rust problems, so I've got to push a wire all the way through, and I know the inside is kind of rough because of the rust scale. So, I put a little piece of shrink wrap on the wire which is going to make everything nice and smooth and then just to do it a little bit I put some minwax on the end of it just to get over the worst parts and if all goes well I can wiggle and work this thing until it comes out the other side And there we are. The last 
last worry on this job is what to do about these holes I drilled in the arms. Now what I have to have is something that will go in this hole, set up fairly quickly, be able to sand it smooth to the shape, and then be painted. Fortunately, hardware stores have a big long row of stuff like that for repairing walls. And this is exactly what we need. What I start off with is a small piece of paper towel and stuff it down in the hole just to keep the spackle from flowing. Because I want it to set up in place where I put it. I call this a, a semi-permanent repair because if someone were to come back and have to rewire this lamp again, say it got caught in another flood or whatever happened to this thing, they could pick that out without too much trouble. to do is just let this set up, trim it down to the right size, find some off-white paint here that'll uh, match this well enough, and uh, I'll be able to tend it, turn this back to the customer. While we're waiting for the uh, spackle to dry, talk for a little bit about what actually happened to the chandelier and how it ended up in this shape. This is a new cardboard insulator, and this is what the old ones look like. Obviously water damaged. There's one more insulator which is this little bitty piece of cardboard and it goes down inside here and it's what separates the center terminal from the shell. And uh, the reason this ch chandelier was blowing fuses is because it was underwater long enough for one of those little cardboard insulators in the middle to totally disintegrate. And after a couple of times changing the bulbs in and out, who knows, it just simply turned to dust. And then the next time they turn the lights on, blew a breaker. That won't be a problem in the future as long as they can keep this thing above water. This is Bronze Age, director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And I thank you for watching the chandelier where everything that could go wrong, did go wrong. But all worked out well in the end. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.